Hi, my name's Steve Gresswell. I'm doing a short demo here on how to use Avid uh, and make a DVD from it. First thing you need to do is make sure that you use audio mix down and video mix down in your timeline to make sure that there's no glitches when you're transferring the file out. Sometimes this can happen. I've created a folder on the desktop called um, DVD, is so it's easier to put your fold like your files into one folder. Once you've done this, you go to export, brings up your save box, go to options to check the appropriate things are ticked. RGB, uh, make sure you got it on 69 or 43, depending what dimension you're using. Uh, it saves any glitches later on in the process. Export the wave into the folder, and then you can close that bit down. Here there's two files in the folder. We've now opened Soros and Squeeze, drop just the main file and then it automatically brings the audio file in as well. At 16.9 that's really just for your reference so you can check that it looks okay. Once you've checked that it's okay you can then go to disk, DVD, now obviously there's any formats for most of the world here but as we're working in the UK it's PAL that we're going for. Um, CBR one pass if you've got the space on your DVD to do it. Make sure it's going to program DVD. It only uses program, not elementary. It can cause glitches, so I always use program. Again, it makes it easier. Uh, if you've got the space on the disc, use PCM audio. It's a better audio format than MPEG uh, layer two. But obviously, if you haven't got the space, use MPEG layer two. Uh, the other thing to check, make sure it's unconstrained, which means it'll pick up the format you're putting it into. And field encoding, always use progressive on DVD. Sometimes field domains cause DVD players to flicker and all sorts of things. Once you've done that, you're then ready to drop it straight into um, compression, really. And that's quite an easy uh, procedure. So, OK, once you've set that up, then you apply it which drops it into the compression box. Next thing you hit squeeze it and uh, it now starts encoding it. Now obviously it depends on the speed of your processor how long this takes. Uh, on mine I'm lucky it only takes two or three minutes. So. Uh, on to the next stage it drops it back into the original box that it came from so always as a default it will always go to where the file has come from originally. And here you are, you can now see the sequence file in there, already compressed. Next stage from this is once this is all compressed and finished, uh, you then need to open up DVD it. Obviously you don't want to save anything there, so... Now you can check it. Uh, I've got mine so there are references in um, media player, but any DVD player reference system you can use. <laughs> And there you can see it working okay. Now we're going to drop that into DVD. It first of all check your your properties that is PAL scan and not um, NTSF unless you're in the states. Always tick the convert uh, compliant video and audio files. Then if there's any glitches in it, it will automatically sort it out for you. Summary so that you can put the information in there that you want. Then hit apply. Okay. Next thing is uh, it's quite simple. You just uh, add your movie find out where it was. Obviously it was on the DVD folder on the desktop to make it easier to find. There we go. Click on that and it will automatically load in and it goes bing when it finishes. And there you go, it's gone bling which means it's ready to now encode as a DVD. Um, again, once it's in here, you can check that the file's gone in OK by pressing play. We have hope in our hearts that we can make life better for you. 
There you go, you can check that your file's okay now, and uh, the next step is now to write a DVD volume. Now the reason you do this, again it saves any glitches and you can check the file rather than wasting loads and loads and loads of DVDs. So this is what I tend to do, is write it as a DVD volume and then you can in import that every time to DVD it just to burn your files off. Uh, always remember to save it as something. I'm going to again save it as test one. And it always saves it in uh, my documents DVDs, my DVDs, which is, there you are, my DVDs test one. Okay. Uh, and now it will render the file off into the, that folder. Uh, the first thing it will do is transcode the video, then the audio, and then it will write the files and appropriate coding to to make a DVD. There you go, DVD volume, DVD volume created successfully. Uh, next step is you can then go to any DVD um, player and load it from the hard drive as a VTS file and it will play. Um, I won't bore you with this bit, you can, there you go, that's how you do it and then go OK and it will play in there. Once you've done that, obviously you can then go and burn a disc um, and you burn it from the DVD volume. So you go to my test, test sources and don't go to the VTS folder, just leave it to the folder that it's actually in, go OK. Uh, make sure you've got a disc in there. Uh, right speed, then go OK, and it will burn your DVD off. Obviously I'm not going to do that because I don't need a disc, but uh, I hope you guys have fun with it. If I have any problems, email me. Speak to you later, bye.